nonstick free dent moistens your mouth and freshens your breath. It's 16 minutes before the hour. We all know about the American Cancer Society, Easter Seals, and the Muscular Dystrophy Telethon, high-profile organizations fighting well-known illnesses. But how do you raise awareness and money for a rare, obscure disease? Here's Dr. Bob. Good morning, Doctor. Good morning, Mark. Mark, this morning we're talking about so-called orphan diseases. These are diseases that have too few victims to generate substantial research or private investment for new drugs and therapies. Histiocytosis is one of them. It affects the immune system, and it's every parent's worst nightmare because it usually strikes young children. It's also frequently misdiagnosed, poorly understood, and often fatal. Now a unique partnership of parents and doctors has adopted this one orphan disease. How did I get it? How did you get it? Well, that's something that hopefully we'll find out one day for research. Right. Now they're smiling, sort of but in 1982, sure. when their daughter Bethany's rash turned out to be the first signs of histiocytosis, Jeff and Sally Towhill had to face the deadly disease alone. Here we sat with a daughter that had this rare disorder that we couldn't find out much about, um, and that there wasn't much research going on. That isolation, and that's exactly what we experienced, and probably that's what motivated us. We vowed to never have let parents go through what we went through. So, on their own, the Towhills formed the Histiocytosis Association. Their kitchen became a source of information and hope. A lot of the children that get this disease uh, survive. I'll send you um, all of our newsletters. What kind of chemo did we get? After a long day at full-time jobs and school, the family works at the association's tiny office, linking hundreds of parents who were once alone with their fears and questions. I was stunned, and then I called the hotline, and I was fortunate Jeff answered, and I cried. I had not in all these years talked to another person who'd had the same experience. But for the Wotex, the ties that bind became even stronger after they lost their own daughter. When uh, one of our friends in the association, when their little girl died, it was like losing Angela. We cried. We cried for little Sarah. And we felt so defeated. And I guess that's why we fought back. This night, the Wotex fight back in a small shop in San Angelo, Texas. Friends of Jolie Petrasky and her daughter, Jerry, are working on an awareness campaign with one clear goal. We hurt just as much as the big diseases, and we need to find, you know, an answer. But answers cost money. Without celebrity telethons, these parents must give more than support. Families across the United States joining together Recently, parents gathered to present a small group of histiocytosis researchers with a check for $30,000 from their own pockets, a direct down payment on their children's future. I have never seen a disease-oriented organization of lay people work in partnership with the scientific community better than this group has done. Does he want to pop up? With so few patients and researchers, that partnership must extend into the examination room. She still has a problem with uh, a waxy ear. Some of the parents have begun to educate the doctors. You want to tell him where that stays at home? In the refrigerator. Where in the refrigerator? Like right on the shelf. Right on the shelf on, uh, on the door? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or in deep? Now, I learned Mom. that from Mommy and Daddy. They never taught us in medical school that you have to be careful how cold you keep this stuff. It's very important for parents to realize that they're ultimately responsible for the care of their children. Both Bethany and Jerry are, for the time being, in remission. For the other children with histiocytosis, hope increases along with awareness and research. It seems like the families uh, have a sense of isolationism. They think they're the only ones, and the, the support groups seem to bring those walls down. They feel that they, they have someone else with the same problems. Uh, does that help them? It seems like it helps them out greatly. Tremendously. I 
heard this great quote at the University of Pittsburgh yesterday, which was that patients feel that they are the prisoners and their doctors and nurses are the wardens. Here it allows a patient really to become a partner with their doctor or nurse. And we've also seen, especially with AIDS, the tremendous power that these support groups have in terms of increasing awareness and pushing for more research funds. That makes all the difference in the world. Thank you, Bob. Good to see you. Thanks a lot.